strong, hopeful, and thankful. Lord, as I go in for my second maintenance dose, be with me and keep me strong. Please give the doctor skilled hands and give me the grace and wisdom to accept whatever outcome you see fit to bestow upon me. I haven't felt this strong in nearly 30 years, and I know my increase in energy and physical strength can only be because of you and your loving grace. While the physical strength in my body is growing, my spiritual strength has never been in question. I remain positive with regards to my outcome only because you are in my life. Your loving guidance, grace, and wisdom that you give me are the reasons why I'm as physically and spiritually as strong as I am. I praise your name and I thank you even for the difficult times because I know that these are the moments in my life where you bless me even more. As I go through my procedure, Lord, watch over my family and friends that are with me and for those who are supporting me from around the world. Let my treatment be an example of your immense power and love for each of us. I'm so thankful that you have brought me this far and I pray you will continue to guide me down the path that could forever change my life. Keep me focused on you, Lord, for without you, I would have nothing. Hey everybody, welcome to the SMA Journey 51 vlog. Okay guys, in this week's video, I'm going to be telling everyone what happened to me on Monday, July the 9th, when I went back to UT Southwestern Medical Center for my second maintenance dose of Spinraza. I put together a small PowerPoint presentation where I not only discuss the procedure itself and what they did to me, but I also go into detail about the proverbial brick wall that I hit the evening after my injection. And this proverbial brick wall that I did hit made me stop and think. So I wanted to share exactly what happened to me, so maybe it'll make your next injection just a little bit better. Now, before the presentation, I've got a few announcements. Most of you can probably already tell by now that I've got a new microphone. Now. For those of you that are having difficulty finding the microphone in the video, there it is right there. Good. I'm glad I could help. Now, I bought a new microphone for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to improve the audio quality of the videos that I do. And number two, my 1080p Logitech webcam that I've been using for nearly seven years has decided to start skipping on me. And when this happens, the audio and the video become unsynced. And when this happens, my videos look like one of those cheesy Japanese movies that you used to watch as a kid. So I'm in the process of getting a new webcam and hopefully that'll clear up the problem. So until then I'm just doing shorter videos and I'm just piecing them together during the post editing portion. So you may see some transitions from one slide to another or from one part of the video to the other, but I'll try to make it as seamless as possible. All right, so let's go into the PowerPoint presentation and let me show you what happened to me during my second maintenance dose of Spinraza. Thank you. I woke up around 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday, July the 9th. My second maintenance dose of Spinraza at UT Southwestern Medical Center's William P. Clements Jr. University Hospital was scheduled to start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I woke up early so I could gather my thoughts before starting my day. Even though I wasn't scheduled to check in at the hospital until 11.30, I got there around 11 o'clock. I've always said that if you get there early, they would probably take you early, and this is exactly what happened to me. After completing the paperwork during the check-in process, one of the nurses came out and took me to my room. Once I got in the room, two other nurses came in, and as one of them began asking me all of the usual questions, the other two nurses were getting everything ready so that they could take a urine and blood sample from me. After answering all of the pre-surgical questions, and as one of the nurses began taking my blood sample, the student doctor came into the room and introduced herself to me. As the nurse began drawing my blood, the student doctor told me that she would be assisting Dr. Steele during the procedure. She was a senior resident with only a year left before taking her boards to officially become a doctor. For those of you that don't know, UT Southwestern Medical Center is a teaching hospital. The student doctors are the ones who actually perform the procedure. Dr. Steele's student, Dr. Sandra Schmidt, would be performing my procedure, but Dr. Steele, the attending doctor, would be in the room to give her pointers and to ensure that everything was done properly. After Dr. Schmidt left the room, 
and after the nurses finished taking my blood and urine samples, they transferred me from my wheelchair to the bed. Since I had about one hour before my procedure was to begin, I took this opportunity to shut my eyes and take a cat nap. At approximately 12.50, a nurse came in to take me to the fluoroscopy suites. Before leaving my room, I asked the nurse if she knew where my spinraza was. She told me that they had already retrieved the spinraza from the pharmacy and it was in the fluoroscopy suite that I would be in, warming up to room temperature. In a previous video, I told everyone to make sure that your spinraza had time to warm up to room temperature before doctors injected this into your central nervous system. If you get to the fluoroscopy suite and your spinraza is in the room, this should be plenty of time for it to warm to room temperature. As the nurse wheeled me into the fluoroscopy suite, the first thing that I did was to eyeball my spinraza to make sure that it was already in the room. Even though the nurse had already told me that it was in the room, I just wanted to make sure for my own reassurance. I've always lived by the rule to trust but verify. After getting in the fluoroscopy suite, three nurses transferred me from my bed to the fluoroscopy table. As the nurses were positioning me on the fluoroscopy table, Dr. Steele and Dr. Schmidt came into the room. After I had been properly positioned, Dr. Steele took a fluoroscopic image of my back to make sure that nurses did not have to move me on the table. Once Dr. Steele was satisfied with my position and that he knew that the opening in my spinal column was in the correct location, he told everyone that he and Dr. Schmidt were about to begin. As Dr. Schmidt took her position behind me, Dr. Steele told her exactly where to inject me with the lidocaine to numb my back. After what felt like a small bee sting, Dr. Schmidt continued to give me lidocaine until she had properly numbed my back. After numbing my back, Dr. Steele gave Dr. Schmidt a few final pointers and instructions. After listening to the instructions from Dr. Steele, Dr. Schmidt began inserting the needle until she reached the central nervous system. It only took one minute for Dr. Schmidt to insert the needle all the way into the central nervous system. As soon as she was in the central nervous system, Dr. Schmidt told Dr. Steele that she was already getting CSF, or cerebral spinal fluid. I have never had a doctor get into the central nervous system as quickly and smoothly as Dr. Schmidt had done. I was very impressed at how she took the instructions from Dr. Steele and had managed to get her way into the central nervous system so quickly. To be honest with you, I think Dr. Steele was impressed as well. The beginning portion of the CSF had a small tinge of blood, but as she continued to withdraw more, the CSF quickly cleared. After only three minutes, Dr. Schmidt had withdrawn five cc's of cerebral spinal fluid. After the CSF had been removed, Dr. Steele began drawing up the five cc's of spinraza. Once the spinraza was ready to be injected, Dr. Steele positioned himself behind me and began injecting the spinraza through the needle that was already in my central nervous system. After only about three minutes, Dr. Steele said that he was finished and he removed the needle and instructed the nurses to wash my back and to put a band-aid on the puncture site. After the nurse washed my back and put a band-aid on the puncture site, the other nurses came into the room and transferred me from the fluoroscopy table back to my bed. After saying goodbye to Dr. Schmidt and Dr. Steele, one of the nursing aides took me back to my room. When I got back to my room, I looked at the clock and it was only 1.25. My four loading doses and my first maintenance dose took between 45 minutes to an hour. My second maintenance dose took less than 30 minutes. It felt like I was in a NASCAR race. Once I got in the room, they put me on the table, changed my fluids, and then put me back in the race. The only thing that I knew was that my second maintenance dose had probably been the easiest procedure out of all of them. After getting back in my room and lying flat on my back for an hour, nurses came in and transferred me back to my wheelchair and I was allowed to go home. I had no side effects from the procedure for the rest of the day. Since I woke up early that morning, I decided that I would go to bed early. At around 7.45 in the evening, I hit the proverbial brick wall. I started getting a migraine headache and a feeling of nausea rushed over my body like a warm blanket. Doctors will tell you to drink something with caffeine if you start getting a headache after your Spinraza treatment. I had my caregiver make me a large cup of black coffee and after about 30 minutes, my headache began to get better. For the nausea, I took three tablets of activated charcoal. Once activated charcoal gets into your stomach, the charcoal will absorb the acid that is causing the nausea. 
Doctors used to give activated charcoal to patients who overdosed on drugs. The charcoal would absorb much of the toxins caused by the drug overdose. Activated charcoal tablets do the same thing with the acid in your stomach. In the last slide of this presentation, I would like to give you my recommendations. Ask your doctor to see if they would allow you to take activated charcoal tablets if you start to get nauseated after one of your Spinraza treatments. Also, check with your doctor about drinking a cup of black coffee as well. The caffeine will help to open the blood vessels in your brain. Headaches are usually caused by the narrowing of blood vessels. The caffeine will open these blood vessels up wider, allowing blood to flow more freely, thus helping to reduce the chances of getting a headache. From now on, I'm going to drink a large cup of black coffee when I get home from one of my Spinraza treatments. My headache started when I began my maintenance dose injections, so I'm hoping that drinking a cup of black coffee will help eliminate the possibility of getting a headache. Please remember, before following any of my recommendations, please consult with your personal doctor to make sure that they clear you to take caffeine for headaches or any kind of activated charcoal products for nausea. They may recommend you take something else to help with these symptoms. Now, let's go out to my website so that I can show you my test results for my blood work and my urinalysis. Okay, so now that we're on my website, don't pay any attention to the date where it says updated on because by the time you watch this video on Sunday, I will have already made this correction along with correcting all of the links and all of the information that's listed below it. To get to my test results, go up to the top right hand portion of my website and select more. From there, select test results. When my test results come up on your screen, you'll see all of the normal ranges in red and I've included all of the test results from my second maintenance dose injection that occurred this previous Monday on July the 9th and is located up here on the top. As you can tell, the partial thromboplastin time, prothrombin time, prothrombin INR, PT INR, total protein random urine, and platelet count numbers all fell within the normal ranges. Now, to get to the PowerPoint presentation that I did in this week's video, go back up to the top portion of my website and select Downloads. From there, select PowerPoint PDF files. By the time you watch this video on Sunday, I will have already included the PowerPoint presentation in PDF format, and it'll be located up here on the top line. Now, I do have one correction to make. While I was doing this week's video, I accidentally misspelled Dr. Steele's name. In the video, I spelt it S-T-E-E-L, and it should have been spelled S-T-E-H-E-L. Now, I'm not gonna go back and correct the video itself, but by the time you're able to view this file in PDF format on Sunday, I promise I will make all the corrections. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation that I did regarding my second maintenance dose. If you enjoyed this week's video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Remember, when you subscribe to the channel, click on the bell icon to be notified of any new videos that I produce. I hope everybody's had a fantastic week. God bless you. And until next Sunday, bye-bye.